Part two of the social movements of the 1960s. The counterculture movement is made up of mainly white middle class college youth. Uh, the lack of organization, direction, drug use led to its collapse. One of the most famous uh, uh, mottos of this era was tune in, turn on, and then drop out. Members of the counterculture were known as hippies. They protested a number of things, but most protested society. How? By leaving it. They actually come from the movement of the 1950s, the beat movement. Remember we talked about them in the 1950s. This is a nonconformist movement. Um, heavily, uh, this movement heavily influences the hippie movement. Timothy Leary, the one who come up with uh, tune in, turn on and drop out, he's a professor, a psychology professor at Harvard, and he is a counterculture philosopher. Tens of thousands would leave behind social institutions, school, uh, work, and home. The hippies' goal was to create an idyllic setting for peace and harmony in the world, and viewed um, they viewed the world as cold and cruel. So, the creation of this peace and love, uh, some called the Age of Aquarius, usually involved three things. Rock and roll, outrageous dress, outrageous dress, and um, they wanted to rebel against the establishment and, of course, heavy drug, re heavy drug use. The use of marijuana, a new drug called LSD to liberate the mind, which, um, by the way, was sanctioned by the government throughout the 50s. They would test this as a truth serum. They thought they could use this with uh, espionage and um Soviet uh, Soviet spies over here, all that good stuff. Uh, but anyway, um, hippies rebelled against the family. Uh, how? Some people lived in min with many others, sharing everything, uh, living in peace in what was uh, what is known as communes or communities living together. Rule. Uh, or in crowded uh, cities together in urban areas, you had crash pads. Uh, some of these are three of the four of the most famous crash pads. That would be Haight Ashbury in San Francisco, that whole district, Greenwich Village in New York, Old Town in Chicago, and 14th Street in Atlanta. The decline of the movement uh, happens. The communes eventually become dangerous. Drug dealers move in. Uh, hippies found that uh, the same society that they were rebelling against, they would eventually conform to and need for help. Uh, Charles Manson and his family of runaways, they killed the pregnant actress Sharon Tate. Uh, Manson claimed he was trying to hasten the revolution. They killed four other people as well. Um, he just recently died in prison. Uh, very brutal, brutal murders, um, and he was not in on it, but his family members went and killed him at his direction. So uh, this was seen as one of the death knells of the hippie movement. Um, Al Altamont Raceway, uh, December of 1969, basically it's a free concert, and they're trying to do a Woodstock of the West, because Woodstock was held in New York State. They were doing this one in California. The Rolling Stones put on a free concert. They hired the Hells Angels for security, which not good in itself. It ends up in a disaster while the Stones are playing. One black man was beaten to death um, So by the Hells Angels. Uh, a lot of bad acid trips at this show, and this, was, this, this show is not, that's why we don't talk about it as much today as we do Woodstock. So Hendrix and Janis Joplin, they die of over, overdoses on drugs in 1970, and they were both 27 years old. This will start the whole musicians, uh, great musicians dying at 27 phenomenon. Because, you know, of course, Jim Morrison died in 71 at 27. But anyway, moving on. Art and fashion. The 1960s saw the rise of pop, pop art, uh, art based on popular culture. Beards, long hair styled, women's clothes became more colorful and comfortable. Blue jeans became a thing. Uh, usually blue jeans were only used to work in uh, and not seen as fashionable until the 60s. Uh, as you see, 
some uh, these were some of the fashions the hippies left behind. Andy Warhol is a famous painter, famous artist, and he has a soup can collection. He painted Campbell soup cans. These things are worth like millions of dollars today if you can get your hands on one. Um, rock music is something that was left behind from the 60s is a blend of rhythm and, uh, rhythm and blues and sometimes rebellious lyrics. Really comes out of the 50s. The teens love this stuff. In the 60s, it brings it, uh, rock and rolls brought into the mainstream more. Um, a little bit about rock and roll here. Uh, it does come out of the blues, rebellious lyrics of the 50s, and really fun lyrics of the 50s. But in the 60s, you start to see this fun music changing and getting into more socially conscious um, thought, uh, trains of thought in these songs. The Beatles, first big band. You know, because you had Elvis in the 50s and you had Chuck Berry, you had some big acts in the 50s, but the Beatles are going to become the first super group. Um, and they uh, launched their first tour in 1964. They influenced millions. They still influenced millions uh, back then. They still influenced millions today uh, with Please Please Me, Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, their last album, Let It Be, or Abbey Road, however you want to look at it. Um, Jimi Hendrix, uh, he brings the guitar into modern day rock. Uh, if it weren't for Jimi Hendrix, I don't know if we'd be playing guitar like we do today in rock and roll music. Um, Janis Joplin, Jefferson Airplane, Crosby, Stills, Nash, and sometimes Young, Santana, Bob Dylan, Joan Baez, The Grateful Dead. There's a long list of 60s artists that influenced music um, today. Credence, uh, Credence Clearwater Revival. Um, so the music will stick around and you've heard a lot of this music and the music is definitely social, a lot more socially conscious back then. Um, you, if you listen to a lot of the songs from the 60s, uh, they usually have some sort of a meaning behind it, social meaning. Here's some big figures of the 60s here. Um, check that, Check that out. So culture and counterculture. Woodstock happens on August 29th, 1969 in New York. Supposed to have 120,000 people. Ended up with over 400,000 people. Three days of nonstop rock and roll from the biggest bands of the day. And they all played for free. And they kind of come in and some of them come in at the last minute and did it. Admission ended up being free. They were going to try to charge, charge people to get in. But there were so many people uh, they couldn't that they just gave up. Uh, the name Woodstock, the name was uh, Woodstock Music and Art Fair, an Aquarian Exposition. It took place on Max Yasger's farm, and it's the biggest hippie gathering ever. So, changing attitudes to the counterculture, as you see, uh, the philosophy is do your own thing. Um, left uh, left an imprint on our social values. I, I will say this is a utopian movement. We've talked about those or you have talked about those in American history one. We see them come up throughout history. Um, and this is the last kind of utopian movement we have seen on a grand scale uh, so far. So mass culture began to address the taboo subjects such as sex, uh, a more casual approach to marriage, and sexuality as you see the divorce rates will double in the 1970s guys um, I believe 55 to 60 percent of all marriages end in divorce today some form or fashion um, homosexuals were coming out of the closet and demanding rights out of this movement you start to see the homosexuals starting to demand their rights as well so in a large sense Americans didn't like society's uh, decline in morals and eventually people are going to adopt a more uh, liberal attitude toward uh, dress and appearance, music and social behavior. The immediate response is going to be a conservative backlash. This backlash would help Nixon win in 1968, and it sets our nation on a conservative course really to where we are today. Um, our society hasn't been quite as liberal as uh, it was in the 1960s definitely politically it sets us on a more conservative um, a more conservative path uh, if you look at your democrat presidents since the 1960s they have all been moderates they have not been great deal uh, uh, great society presidents or new deal 
um, presidents. They have been more moderate presidents.